Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past week we had a ton of different iOS releases with the iOS 16 public beta, along with iPadOS 16 public beta, the Apple Watch, TV, Mac, and HomePod OS releases for public beta, as well as even iOS 15.6 release candidate too. All of those are out. We had a ton of those as well as additional news about iPhone 14, even iPhone 15. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. And this is your weekly Apple news update for the week of July 18th, 2022. And the first thing is Apple's new Brompton road store in London will open on July 28th. Apple has a website about this. I'll link it in the description explaining everything new about it. And then they also have some today at Apple sessions from July 28th to the 31st with art, music, fitness, and well-being sessions. Many of those sessions are already booked though. Also, they have a wallpaper for this available, so I'll link that as well, but you can see there's a different flower background on green, and then also a curated playlist. So all of those things are available and that store should be opening very soon. If you'll be going, I'd love to hear from you and let us know. So maybe we can get some pictures of it. Back to school deals are now live in Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. In the UK, gift cards are up to 120 pounds with qualifying purchases. In other European countries, the amount is up to 150 euros. It varies depending on the country you live in, but those should be available. They were made live in the US and Canada a week or so ago, so it's great that they're rolling out in many other countries. Now, if you're using the App Store and you subscribe to Apple Arcade, they're removing some games. So this is something that was a bit unexpected, I think. But if you scroll down, keep scrolling, you'll see down toward the bottom that they have leaving Arcade soon. You can see the list of these, of different apps leaving. And unfortunately, once they leave, you won't be able to play them again according to the latest news on this. So if you're into Projection First Life Light or Life Slide or any of these other apps, you won't be able to play them. Why they're doing that is hard to say. Maybe they had a contract, but it looks like they're just not going to be available anymore. Now, if you play Minecraft on iPhone or iPad, I've shown this in many different videos where I show it for performance reasons and more, you can now use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. So if you wanna use it along with Minecraft, you can do that now on an iPad or iPhone. I know my son will appreciate this as he regularly plays this game, so I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that. I just found out about that today, and so you can use it on Minecraft finally if you wanna do that. Now, back in 2019, Johnny Ive left to form an independent design company with Apple Apple is a client. You can see that in an Apple newsroom release here. And according to a recent story by the New York Times, it looks like he's no longer consulting with Apple either. Jeff Williams has been in charge since then. And while Johnny Ive came up with some really great designs, there's also some that seem to be a little bit odd for many people, such as the butterfly keyboard that seemed to go through multiple revisions and still not work great. So an obsession with thinness and lightweight, but not necessarily practicality seemed to be a problem for a lot of people. Johnny Ive has reportedly said that after, after Apple launched the Apple Watch, they were no longer design focused, which I definitely could see some of that happening. And without Steve Jobs there to sort of balance out and work with Johnny Ive. Maybe that's some of the odd de design choices we've seen over those previous years, but either way, it looks like Apple's finally gone in a new direction with some of the new Macs. So let me know which era you prefer most, most the Johnny Ive era or the current era of MacBooks, iPhones, and more. Every year we get new emoji, and this is not due to Apple, but rather the Unicode consortium that comes up with the emoji, and then Apple just designs the emoji based on what the standard is. Just like Android does just like Windows does. And so Apple does the same thing. Thanks to Emojipedia, there's some design previews of what we can expect from Apple, such as a shaking face. We also have the Seek Faith, also jellyfish, hair pick, different colored hearts, a moose and more. So here's some of them as far as a preview goes. Usually once these are settled upon, Apple creates the emoji and then releases them later in the year with an update. So maybe iOS 16... Point one or something around that time, we could see a new update with emoji. So these are the new standard. Apple doesn't determine them. They just put out whatever the standard is for that time. Now, as the economy slows, Apple is planning to cut spending and hiring for select teams, according to a report by Mark Gurman. So it seems like as things start to slow down a little bit, they're cutting back. Google announced something similar. And we also have an earnings report very soon from Apple that's coming up. So maybe they'll announce that then that could be 
what this is all about. So it looks like they're going to slow that down. And you'll see that as a report here from Bloomberg with Mark Gurman. So definitely something that looks to be happening soon, but hopefully things get a little bit better. The 2015 Apple TV with the original Siri remote without the white ring on the menu button will now be classified as vintage as of June 30th, according to a memo from Mac rumors. You can see I unboxed it here quite some time ago, and I actually like this remote. I know a lot of people prefer the new one. This was my favorite, although I do like the new one as well, but this one is something a lot of people were happy to see go away. It's now going to be vintage and we're moving on to the newer remote. There's also a rumored update to the current remote as well. So maybe we'll see that later this year. Now, if you're a regular user of WhatsApp, there'll be a new updated Mac version available, hopefully fairly soon. WhatsApp is testing out a new version for the Mac that's designed specifically for Apple Silicon. While you can use the current version, this is an updated version native to Apple Silicon, and this was posted by wabetainfo.com. And as you can see, it shows more information about it. So I'll link that in the description if you want to check it out yourself, and it's available as a beta you'd probably have to sign up and then you can test it out, but you would have to be accepted for this one. I don't believe it's available for everyone. Now, as far as iOS 15.6, many people expected that to release today. However, Apple instead decided to release an update to Mac OS with an RC2. So Mac OS 12.5 RC2 for some reason. Instead, we have no iOS 15.6, leading me to believe we'll probably see it as soon as tomorrow. Now, it could be tomorrow or Wednesday, but I think probably tomorrow seems likely. Sometimes they only give a day between those beta updates. But again, we'll have to wait and see as Apple has changed this quite a bit. I'm glad they're taking their time to get things right. But either way, if you were waiting for that, hopefully we'll see it as soon as tomorrow. Many of you have been asking me also about iOS 16 public beta 2 or beta 4. I probably think it's going to be next week as this past year or the previous year with iOS 15, Apple released the public beta on June 30th. And then the next public beta and iOS 15 beta 3, which was the following version that also matched public beta 2 on July 14th. So it took a couple weeks. So probably next week seems more likely based on what we've had in the past. It could be longer than that. It could be shorter than that, but that's what we've had year over year. So sometimes Apple's consistent with that. Now we've heard a lot about iPhone 14 with the upcoming iPhone 14 plus model and pro max model, the plus replacing the mini I've shown these in different videos where these are models of what they look like or have a general idea of them. And according to the wall street journal, iPhone 14 could be shipped as an eSIM only option where we wouldn't have the option for a traditional physical SIM as the rest of the world starts to adopt eSIM such as Europe and Asia. So that's something we could see this year. We've heard this year over year. So it's hard to say if it's actually going to be true, but at some point I definitely think we're going to see that where we'll just have eSIMs that we can quickly move between devices iPhone 14 clone cases are already showing up in China, according to Majin Bu on Twitter. And this could be the same colors that they release. These could change, but typically as they're being made in China, you'll see sort of early leaks of what they look like. So maybe we'll have some of these colors and much more. Now, iPhone 15, we're getting more news about that. And Ming-Chi Kuo is at it again with future news that the long rumored periscope zoom lens will be released on iPhone 15. However, he's saying that it will be exclusive to the 15 pro max. So where we've had it with some other manufacturers, such as Samsung, it looks like they may make it available for the max model only next year. So that's something that's been in the works for quite some time. Now, according to Ross Young, who's been very accurate with iPhone displays and much more, he's a display analyst has stated that Apple is still working on folding phone technology, but one of the limiting factors is due to production limitations with regards to the availability of foldable glass. That sort of manufacturing in large volumes has become problematic. So maybe that's just holding them a little bit back, or maybe they're just making sure it's right. Either way, it looks like they're still working on it. Now, there's been a lot of controversy about the latest MacBook Air. I did a quick unboxing of it of a different color version, the starlight color, but this is one I was waiting for in the mail. So this is the one I was going to use full time or at least use on the go. And my quick review of it is it's quite good. I know there's a lot of news about, well, it doesn't have fans, it overheats. 
I can fully edit 4k video, export it, edit any photos I need to, or thumbnails for videos. It does that fine for me. Not as fast as an M one ultra or an M one pro, but it's super fast overall. So it's definitely something that's usable for most people. No issues for most. I think of course, if you want a full review, let me know in the comments below. Now, according to Mark German, the current MacBook pro, this is the 16 inch MacBook pro, but according to German, the current MacBook pro will gain a pro and max version of Apple's latest M two chipset between the fall of this year and spring of 2023. So we could see an update to that. That seems about right. Every 18 months or so is what he said before. And many others have said, so a big update with those processors with some marginal jumps, maybe some big jumps in the GPU side look like they may be closer than we thought. So maybe just this spring we'll see those, or maybe it'll be next year. According to Ross young, the rumored 14.1 inch iPad that I've mentioned before is something we could see in 2023. He believes that the under display true depth camera technology may come to iPad first, where Apple gets it right on the iPad and then releases it. We saw that with things such as LIDAR and other features in the past, such as mini led. So they definitely could push it to iPad first. And he talked about this in a recent Mac rumors podcast. So if you want to hear more about that, be sure to check out their podcast where he talks all about what he knows as far as displays and more. And speaking of displays, the long rumored upcoming pro display XDR is said to be delayed until 2023, but would be expected to have 120 Hertz display according to Ross Young again. And that's something that I think most of us would want on a pro display. The current pro display is amazing, but definitely lacks that feature. So I can't wait to have maybe a mini led like this iPad with 120 Hertz ProMotion display and even brighter technology. This past week, we also heard from ET news that there was starting production on the mixed reality headset, the Apple AR or VR headset to be produced in the fourth quarter of 2022, which would indicate that Ming Chi Kuo was correct. And we could see it in January as far as an announcement and a release sometime in early 2023. So that's something we could see hopefully sooner rather than later. We may see a preview of it before then, just so developers can get apps ready for it but also the second gen version is still apparently planned for the following year with a less expensive version. It might be lighter and have some updated features, but that would be 2024. So it looks like that should be a reality fairly soon. And hopefully we'll see that maybe by the end of this year. And so that's everything for this past week. Of course, tons of news, iOS betas and more. Let me know if you're running the iOS 16 beta and how it's going for you. And what are you looking most forward to this year? iPhone 14 or something else. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.